Hello and welcome to Console Accessories. And in today's video, we're going to be going through this. It's a keyboard and mouse adapter, which essentially means you can use a keyboard and mouse with any of your consoles. It works as in on the back with a Switch, Xbox One, PS4 and PS3. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to be using it on the Switch, so I'll show you how to set it up and play it on the Switch. Because the Xbox One, the PS4, yes, it works for them and it works for all of the games for the PS4, but to be fair, it has native anyway, so you can just plug a keyboard and a mouse in to the PS4 and the Xbox One, and it works with some games. So that's not that interesting. It's more interesting for the Switch because that doesn't support anything with the mouse and keyboard. So it's just interesting to be able to use that. Okay, so it's called the KX adapter, and I got this from Amazon. And if you've been Googling around keyboard and mouse on the Switch or on the PS4, you might have come across one of these. Now this is a, a Zim 4. This is an old version, so I, you, you can only get these secondhand now. You can't you be lucky to get one of these brand new. And essentially what you do is you plug your keyboard and your mouse into there, and then on the back, you plug your controller, your DS4, your Xbox One controller, and your power in there. And it's been superseded by something called the Zim Apex, which is a which is kind of like a dongle and it works virtually the same as this. Now the key difference is a lot more customization with this than there is with this one. And this one doesn't actually support the Nintendo Switch, only supports the PS4 and the Xbox, whereas this one supports the Nintendo Switch. And also, this thing, or the Zim Apex, the new one, as you can get brand new, costs $125 or £130. This, picked up off Amazon, for £18 or $22. So this is over a hundred dollars more or 110 pounds more, which is insane. So it's, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the differences and then you can work out yourself whether you need to go for the, I'd say the kind of like the professional route or the casual route. I think that's how we'll refer it to. So this is like the professional and this is more of your casual. Okay, so I'll go through the differences as we, as we get on through the video. But this one's got the first bonus of officially supporting the Switch, whereas this one doesn't. Okay, so when you open up the box, what you get inside is the adapter itself, a dongle, and the user manual. Okay, so get rid of the plastic. And the first impressions are that it's tiny and it's light, and you, you know, to be fair, you're not gonna be too worried about it with um, the weight because you're not gonna be carrying it around very much, but just to show you how light it is, it's 65 grams, so there's nothing to it. And on these there, that's where you plug your mouse and your keyboard in. That's where you would plug your PS4, your Xbox controller in. And that's where you plug the other, the other one to your mouse or your keyboard in. And then that's it. And on the top here, you've got four LEDs. So these two will go red once the mouse and the keyboard is connected. This one will turn green to show that it's on. And then this one here will turn blue once you've told it that you're connecting the Nintendo Switch. There, there's, there's a little bit of a process involved. And then this is brilliant because you would just add that to there and you can play keyboard and mouse handheld. Okay, so not just docked. So you would play it with docked. So you plug that into your dock. You can play it handheld into there. And you hear all these horror stories about people plugging things into here and it bricking their console. Okay, I've used this for a while and it hasn't bricked it to mine. So disclaimer, if it bricks your console, I'm terribly sorry, it's not my fault. However, it's a risk you're willing to take. It was a risk I was willing to take. I should think it's okay, because it doesn't really supply power, but it's still a bit scary, isn't it? Plugging something into there that's not officially licensed, but it works for me. So I'll, I'll go through that in a bit. I'll show you how it works in a bit. Because I need to tell you about the instruction manual, which is a difference between this one and this one. Okay, so when you fold out your instruction manual, you've got this of how to how to use it for the Xbox. You need an Xbox controller to plug in. You need a PS4 controller to plug in. With the Switch and the PS3, you don't need any controller. You just plug it into the Switch. So forget that bit. It's This is the all important bit here. So if I show you this and leave it here for as long as I can, this tells you that it's all hardwired. So all the buttons on here on the Switch hardwired to those on the the keyboard and the mouse so for example the the Q button on the keyboard 
is the Switch L1 and the E is R1. You think, okay, well, I'm not too sure about that. However, this is just an example. Up and down, left and right is as it normally is on a PC, W, S, A and D. And your right, your left and your right buttons, these two, are there, Q and E. So they're in a perfect place. Why wouldn't they be there? And again, on here, if I show you the, the triggers, the left and right triggers, the left trigger is actually the right of the mouse and the right trigger is the left on the mouse. Uh, again, they've thought about it because this is your this is your firing finger. So you're gonna be firing there and zooming there. Actually, this is your firing finger and you're zooming, all right? So transfer that to a mouse, there's your firing and zooming. So they've thought about it. So that one would be is the right hand one, so left is to the right on the switch, and the right is to the left on the switch. Okay, so that would be like if you were doing some sort of sniping, you would zoom in with that one and then you'd be firing with that one. Or no more firing that one. Okay. So here we go. And I think it's been laid out quite nicely, to be honest. And like I said before, you're, you're paying a lot of money to have the customization because you can have profiles set up. You can have, so instead of changing all the all the buttons around, you just have different profiles, which are nicely color coded in here. Like you could have Fortnite um, as purple and have this as jump. And then you want to flick over to Overwatch, which could be red. And then that could be um, fire. And you, you wouldn't need to faff around with change all the key. You just change the profile. So convenience wise, this is nice. But I think they've done quite a good job because how would you want to, come back to the home screen on the switch when well, it's escape on the keyboard of course it is okay and I think if you're going to learn how to use a keyboard on a switch why not just use learn to use these because I think these are laid out pretty nicely I'm, I'm quite pleased with this okay and the way you set it up is you plug the mouse or keyboard into one of them and the mouse and keyboard into one of them if you didn't want it that way you could just swap it over there it, it's not precious about it plug it in however you want and these will light up so let's plug it into the switch fire it up so there we go we've got the red and if we go into it because if it goes into standby it turns it all off so there we go we know we've got the the mouse which is lit up anyway and the keyboard's lit up so we know we've got them and the green means it's on now we need to make this blue and the way you do that for the switch is hitting control and two on the keyboard and it's done that it will turn blue so there's control and two and there we go it's turned blue okay so we now know that the keyboard and mouse will be transferred onto this and we know left and right is w s and d there we go we're already in okay so and space is a so if i hit space go to that uh, make sure we get that okay and then i'm going to quickly skip forward and we'll get into the firing range on Overwatch. Okay, here we are in the firing range. Now I've selected Widow, because I can show you this. And there was a feature that the instruction manual says that's only really for the PS4. It says the F3 and F4 lowers and increases sensitivity. Um, it actually works for the Switch as well, but not huge amounts. As you can see, it's unbelievably sensitive. If you kind of press F3 a few times, it kind of lowers the sensitivity down a bit, which makes it not nice. Having said that, it's still quite sensitive on the mouse, okay? so. If I show you, if I just do a couple of headshots here, what I'll do is I'll do a full 360 and kind of measure it. So if I leave my mouse on the edge of the, the mouse mat there and I'll have my pointer there on that robot. If I do a full 360, okay. Uh, 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 there we go, there. So we've got, what's that, 10 centimeters or so? Okay. So it is quite sensitive as default. Now with, um, Overwatch, you can change sensitivity. So you can change it about, um, I know it's exponential ramp and things like that. If you Google it with the Zim, there's instructions on how on the settings you can have that. I think you just copy what that would be, kind of lowering the sensitivity and lowering. So it's nice that. But I'm just saying for other games as well, it might be quite sensitive. You'll just have to see. And as well, with the mouse will always be this stick. So for something like um, Football Manager, your cursor would go around the screen you'll be using this stick here. You can't change that to here. So if you wanted to move the cursor around the screen or save some like Football Manager, you'd be needing to use the, the keyboard. And it's not ideal, is it? But for things like Football Manager, it'd just be nice to have the cursor on this hand, but it doesn't mean you can do that. But I hope it's coming across as 
because there doesn't seem to be any lag. I mean, it seems it seems really nice. I think it seems really nice to play with. Like I was saying, it's very sensitive, but at the end of the day, I don't mind it being sensitive at all. And I, I think, I hope it comes across as non-laggy because it doesn't seem very laggy to me at all. Really, really nice inputs. And then when I hit home screen, and then we can do that, you see? I think it's great. It, it, there, there, seems, there appears to be no lag, and I, I have tried it docked, and it's exactly the same. All you would do with docked is plug that end into your dock. So easy, it's just so plug and play. It just hasn't got the customization of, of maybe a Zim. So what I'm saying, that's probably why it's a casual, and this is why this is more of the professional. Okay, so I've been for a few, for, through a few games, um, I kind of think that a keyboard and mouse would be used for first-person shooters. I've used it for Fortnite, I've used it for Overwatch, and I've used it for Sniper Elite, and they all seem to work beautifully. And I'm really pleased with this, and I'm gonna keep this. And um, I don't know if I'll be using it for um, competitively, because it's, like I was saying, it's, with Overwatch, it's, it's kind of a bit twitchy, isn't it? And this is a bit sensitive for, for, for my liking, but I think if you just want to use this casually, I can't recommend this highly enough. For $22 or 18 quid, spot on save yourself 100 quid and especially the fact that it, it works with the with the switch it was officially supported um, it doesn't work with the switch light I have tried everything obviously you can't dock the switch light so it needs to go in handheld it doesn't work I'm not sure why I just can't get it to work on the switch light so it's only the regular switch and it's only the switch either handheld or docked using this adapter okay so what do you think do you think it's first question do you think it's cheating using a mouse and keyboard on Overwatch and Fortnite on the Switch? That's a huge one, because I know there's a few Overwatch channels out there that get very upset about people using keyboard and mouse on Overwatch. But I've got a friend who plays Overwatch quite a lot on the PS4, and he says, higher ranks, you've got to be using a keyboard and mouse is prevalent. So, hey, that's your first question. Um, secondly, have you got one of these, or are you thinking about picking it up? And if you want me to test any games, um, let me know and I can run through the game for you and see what it feels like and have a go at it before you buy it. But for $22, 18 quid, I think this is a solid purchase. So easy to use, real plug and play. There's no mucking about. With the Zim, there's a lot of faffing about and it's likely to go a bit wrong, but this is a brilliant product. Really happy. So let me know, let me know in the comments below if you've got one, if you're gonna be picking one up and what you think of this. Okay, and there we have it. And until the next video, bye-bye.